right, this is section 6.6, .6, which talks about other trig functions. And I want to let you know that because of this week with our testing and everything, um, that we're just going to go over the very, very basics of this. You're not going to have any official homework assignment from your textbook over this section because I want to go over it with you. However, there are some things that I want you to complete before the end of this week. And you are welcome to work with each other or ask me questions, anything you need. So we have three other, or I'm sorry, four other trig functions that we need to look at. The other main one besides sine and cosine is going to be the tangent function. Okay, so here's tangent theta. And tangent is actually pretty easy to work with. Um, all it is is a ratio of sine over cosine, um, which happens to be the same exact thing as what slope is. It's the change in y over the change in x. So I'm going to write this out for you so you can see what I mean. Okay, so there you go. So if I want to know the tangent of a particular degree measure or radian measure, all I would have to know would, would be the sine and cosine values of that same value and put it in a fraction. So let's take um, an example and see how to do this. Okay, so I'm going to write this as a ratio of the sine of 30 degrees over the cosine of 30 degrees. And you can use your table if you want to, but I'd like you to try to pause this video and fill this ratio on your own. Okay, so the sine of 30 degrees is one half. So I'm going to write one half in my numerator and the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. Now whenever there are fractions within fractions, that's called a complex fraction, and I'm going to rewrite it so that I can work with this a little bit easier. And I'm going to write it just like this, 1 half divided by the square root of 3 over 2. And hopefully by now through your practice in this, you, you are very familiar with multiplying by the reciprocal. Go ahead and do that and let's simplify this. Okay, which, if you did this correctly, you wrote 1 half times 2 over the square root of 3, and the 2's here will cancel, and then all I will have left is 1 over the square root of 3. And like I told you before, do not ever leave an answer with a radical in the denominator. Let's rationalize it and make it so that the radical is in the numerator instead. Okay, so 1 times the square root of 3 is just the square root of 3. And the square root of 3 times itself is just 3. So if you want to, and what you need to do is on your table behind your unit circle where it says tangent of 30 degrees, this is what you need to write. So part of your quote unquote homework this week is to fill out that tangent column. Okay? So do that the best that you can. Once again, if you need help, ask. Now the next thing I'm going to talk to you about are the next three trig functions, which are all called reciprocal functions. I'm going to show you why. Okay, so here we go. So we have three reciprocal functions. We have one reciprocal function for each main function that we have. So we have one for sine, one for cosine, one for tangent. So I'm going to show you why this is called reciprocal. So for secant, the shorthand way to write this is SEC, and we're going to put a theta sign here. And this is equal to the reciprocal, aka 1 over our cosine function. So if I wanted to know the secant of uh, a particular degree measure, I would do 1 divided by the cosine of that degree measure. So for example, the secant of 30 degrees. So I would do 1 over the cosine of 30 degrees, which if you've been studying, you should know that to be the square root of 3 over 2. Oops, I did that wrong. Hang on. Okay, much better. And um, I'm going to use my division. I'm going to write out 1 divided by the square root of 3 over 2. 
and this is one over one. Go ahead and take care of this, but you should get two over the square root of three, and then we have to rationalize this. So I'm going to do this below, two over the square root of three times the square root of three over the square root of three. And I'm sorry if you can't read my handwriting. I'm going to try this one more time. It's hard to write. Okay, here we go. I wrote it out to the side out here instead. So here's my work. Okay, two over the square root of three times the square root of three over the square root of three. This is rationalizing my denominator, which gives me two square roots of three over three. So in your table behind your unit circle where the column says secant, this would go where it says secant of 30 degrees. This is another column I want you to fill out by the end of the week, as well as these other two. So your main goal before the end of the week is to have that whole back side of that table completely filled out. Okay? So let's look at cosecant. Cosecant is um, shorthanded CSC theta. And this is the reciprocal function of sine. So 1 over sine theta. And I'm not going to do an example for this because I just did one above it. You should be able to see the, the pattern by now. If not, you can always come see me. Um, and another a way to remember which one is which, because it seems like cosecant would be cosine and secant would be sine. Just look at the letters. So S and C and then C and S. So whatever a reciprocal function you have, just think of the opposite uh, first letter. It either has to be S or C, and that will tell you what the reciprocal function is. So for secant, capital S, that means I use C, so cosine. That's just one way of remembering it. Um, if that doesn't help you at all, try to come up with your own way of remembering it because these can be confusing. And then, of course, cotangent is the simplest one to remember because it has tangent in the name of it. And this is shorthanded as COT, cotangent, and theta. And this is the reciprocal function of 1 over tangent theta. And another thing that I want you to be aware of is these reciprocal functions are not in your calculator. So you have to know exactly what you're doing in order to do this. So I can't type in to my calculator a button that says SEC. It's not going to happen. You have to know that it's 1 over the cosine of that value. Okay? So this is your main goal before the end of the week, to completely fill out that table. That's your homework for Section 6.6. .6. And next week, we're going to have our first speed quiz. So please be sure you are aware of that, okay? Start studying. And that concludes this uh, tutorial.